Hello and welcome to Astron X. Today's topic, building a warp drive. In our first video, the Alcabir White Warp Drive, we explained how a warp drive works, at least in theory, but how about in practice? Quick recap. The warping of spacetime is achieved by oscillating a torus at high frequencies so that the energy, any energy, is alternately increased and decreased repetitively. This action generates a negative region of spacetime both around and through a torus. This region of negative spacetime produces a repulsive gravitational field that radiates outward in all directions from the torus, much like an electric field. It is this repulsive gravitational field that counteracts the time-slowing, time-dilation effect that is caused by traveling at very high speeds and also reduces the starship's mass. Together, they allow the ship to accelerate faster for the same output energy by its reaction drives. Does a warp drive actually require negative or exotic matter? Alcabir's original concept made use of negative energy in the form of unknown exotic mass. However, Dr. White found that negative energy can be generated by low density positive energy. More on that in a moment. So the big question is then, how does one go about actually building a warp drive? According to White, if a normal positive energy field is spread out over a large enough volume, the energy of that field becomes negative, producing a repulsive gravitational field in consequence. White also showed that if there were more than three spatial dimensions, simply oscillating the repulsive gravitational field will produce a hyperspatial oscillation, which in turn gives rise to a stronger distortion. A simple and effective means of achieving this is by means of an electromagnetic field oscillating within a superconductive torus. And there you have it. This is how spacetime is warped. So now the question is, are there more than three spatial dimensions? It would indeed appear to be so. For starters, many unified field theories, such as string theory, require more than three spatial dimensions. More importantly, Einstein's theory of relativity treats time in much the same manner as space. It is called space-time, after all. For example, gravity is a result of a curvature of the fabric of space and time. In other words, a movement toward or away from a mass is also a movement through time as if it were a spatial dimension. When you look at it from a logical standpoint, it appears that time can indeed be considered a spatial dimension, albeit one that all sublight matter is forced along in a single direction. Therefore, in this respect, Dr. White's work appears to be well-founded indeed. Here's a good question. Can a warp drive be used as a sublight propulsion? Now, up to this point, we have been referring to it as a drive for the sake of being understood. However, Dr. Froning found that his variant would actually boost the Starship's acceleration rather than its speed. Both Alcabir's original concept and White's variant boost the Starship's speed relative to the stationary observer. All motion is relative in Einstein's theory of relativity, so if a starship speed is boosted relative to Earth, all is fine. However, since the device producing the boosting effect, the torus, is moving with the starship and not the Earth, its relative speed and boost are therefore zero. And from this, we suggest that Fronin's proposal is the correct interpretation. Therefore, in conclusion, the Alcabir drive is not, in fact, a drive per se, but rather a mass and time screen that allows for a much greater acceleration 
for a given energy input. So we might call the Alcubierre warp drive the Alcubierre warp screen instead. However, perhaps some variant of the drive could be used as a gravitational drive, possibly by means of repelling the ground. Does a warp screen also function as a radiation or debris shield? A certain number of folks think that the warp bubble can serve as a shield against debris since it warps spacetime. No, a warp screen only shields and negates against or screens away time dilation and mass. It does not warp spacetime enough to deflect cosmic debris. Is the warp screen, commonly known as warp drive, a time machine? Hmm. Yes, according to relativity, any faster than light travel is equal to time travel. The math indicates that if you carefully plotted your course, you could indeed travel back in time. As far as coming back from the past, perhaps time dilation. Of course, there are a great deal many unknowns either way. Is the warp screen safe to operate? As with anything that can wield immense power, if properly implemented, yes it is. However, upon exceeding the speed of light, the starship would generate a great gravitational wake and an immense amount of radiation endangering nearby planets, other spacecraft, etc. Therefore, great care must be taken when exceeding the speed of light. How much energy will a warp screen require? For faster than light speeds, a warp screen will require massive amounts of energy. On par with that required to fly between the star systems at sublight speeds, using only reaction drives. As White has found, the energy required to go 10 times the speed of light would be equivalent to the mass energy of the Voyager spacecraft, which is a lot. However, for sublight speeds, the energy required would be roughly equivalent to the output of a nuclear power plant, more doable. Actually, a warp screen could become very important, even required bit of technology for any fast interplanetary travel, especially given that fusion ships are just around the corner. Can a warp screen actually be built? Let's do a quick summary of what we need to build a warp screen. One very potent energy source uh, such as fusion, two, a conductive torus, three, strong non-conductive support structure, four, high voltage, high frequency power distribution system, and five, a powerful conventional reaction drive such as a fusion or antimatter rocket. As we discussed in our previous video, fusion is around the corner with it, we will have a potent energy source, and with that, a powerful reaction drive. A large metal torus ought to do nicely for the warp field generator. The question is how to support and attach the torus while avoiding danger of electric discharge. Super strong plastics or carbon composites might do the trick, at least provided the strain is kept to a minimum. Or perhaps something like diamond nanofibers made into a stiff composite could work. The voltages and frequencies required, at least for sublight speeds, are not much greater than utilized in particle accelerators, which have been in existence for many decades. So yes, given a few years of R&D, we could indeed build a warp screen, at least for sublight speeds. Could we build a warp pinto? No comment. So now the question is, when will we build a warp screen? Well, that depends greatly on the level of interest, especially commercial interest, and given that we are now entering the age of commercial spaceflight. Based on recent developments in spaceflight, 
It's obvious that space is our future, ensuring our survival, pushing the boundaries of the known, and providing an avenue for exponential economic growth. So it's now only a matter of time before our collective attention turns to worlds beyond our own star, especially given certain recent remarks by the president of SpaceX, Gwen Shotwell, in regards to interstellar travel being their next goal once their interplanetary transport system is up and running. So it would not be overly optimistic to bet on the construction of a starship beginning sometime in the next decade. Astonishing? Well, yes and no. It seems that every generation that was faced with a radical new development was disbelieving at first, but motorized carriages, airplanes, and rocket ships happened regardless. What are we, Astron X, doing? Other than making videos and developing the necessary near-future Starship tech, I don't know if anyone has noticed, but we are slowly creating Star Trek Scotties. That is to say, we are laying the foundation for future warp drive engineers. But that's not all. We're also working towards the construction of multiple starships. Well, that concludes this video. As always, thanks for watching, subscribe, and if you want to support us on Patreon, please do so. Thank you. Until next time, keep wandering about space.